The story of Napoleon Bonaparte has taken on a mythical status since his death. And it's no wonder that the man called the little corporal as a token of affection, not because of his perfectly normal height, has captivated the public for 200 years. Napoleon invaded Egypt, negotiated dozens of treaties, survived being bayoneted, and chose to place the crown on his own head when he was consecrated. And he did most of that before he was 30. Physically, Napoleon has been described by biographers as scrawny but charming. He was a clever military commander and diplomat. He was also epically ambitious. Though he censored the French press to control the narrative about him, his letters to his wife show a deeply passionate man. Napoleon Bonaparte was born on the island of Corsica in 1769 the year the territory was sold to France by Genoa. After graduating from the French Military Academy on the edge of the French Revolution, Bonaparte returned to Corsica. But by 1792, his family had switched between Corsican resistance and allegiance to France too many times, and the family was banished. Napoleon resumed his military office in France. A few years later, he began Frenchifying his name as Napoleon Bonaparte. By this time, the French monarchy had been overthrown and executed, and the National Convention had been installed as the governing assembly. Napoleon was promoted to brigadier general, but his advancement stalled. He was trapped by his lavish lifestyle, as well as his association with the more radical members of the government. This is why he found himself in Paris without a command in October of 1795, when the new constitution was submitted. Those loyal to the monarchy, Royalists rioted in the streets to stop its passage. Napoleon was quickly made second in command of the army. He confronted the Royalists and saved the Constitution. After this, he was made a commander and became an advisor to the new government, the Directory. He also met the widow, Josephine Tagier de la Pagerie. By the spring, Napoleon had married Josephine and assumed command of the Army of Italy. He conquered Sardinia, Mantua and Vienna, negotiated settlements, gained land for France, and restructured Italy and Austria as he saw fit. To the people of France, Napoleon was a hero. The Directory, however, felt threatened by his ambition. They sent him to end the naval war with Britain, causing him to become stranded in Egypt, which he began to reorganize politically. This alarmed Turkey, which joined with Britain, Austria, and Russia against France. These military troubles abroad destabilized the still new government in Paris. Napoleon headed home, where he joined the coup d'etat that replaced the directory with the consulate. This made Napoleon the first consul, master of France. By 1800, a new constitution had been passed that dramatically increased the consul's powers. Napoleon convinced the Pope to accept the Republic, and he completed the codification of civil law that would come to bear his name. The Napoleonic Code made many changes from the Revolution, administrative and judicial, permanent. On May 18, 1804, inspired by a failed assassination attempt, Napoleon declared himself Emperor of France. He left Josephine in 1810, and by March of 1811, as his new wife gave birth to a son, Napoleon saw his empire reach its greatest extent. By the following year, however, anti-French sentiment was rampant, and he faced military actions all over Europe. The fighting was billed as against the emperor himself, not the people of France. Soon, Napoleon was deposed. He retreated to the island of Elba, but still monitored the new government returning to France in March of 1815 to challenge the new regime. Napoleon raised an army, but was defeated by an international coalition led by the British at Waterloo. Forced to abdicate, he was exiled to St. Helena. He found life on the pretty island dull. A handful of followers accompanied him, and they resided in a manner. By 1817, he was showing signs of either an ulcer or stomach cancer. He died in 1821. 
Napoleon's insatiable ambition cut short his rule, but his reputation continued to grow. In 1840, his remains were returned to France with the fanfare of a state funeral. His nephew capitalized on his popularity to become emperor a decade later.